A From Dublin to Cleveland production. Hello and welcome to From Dublin to Cleveland. I'm Logan Howard and I'm joined, as always, by the one and only Brendan Thomas Merritt. How's it going today, Brendan? Very well, thanks, Logan. I was at the theater today watching a murder mystery play. Um, and tomorrow, <laughs> it's not tomorrow, Monday, I have myself. <laughs> In two days from now, I am going on holidays to Edinburgh in scotland so uh yeah very excited for the upcoming trip and how are Uh, things with you well see i thought you were about to say you know like beautiful aruba or france but you're going to scotland that's sad that's a sore spot as logan knows very very (laughs) i won't give the full story less offense to be taken uh, years down the line, people watch this retroactively, but <laughs> but yes, I did have designs on going to Paris, um, but although I had all my ducks in a row and all my eggs in baskets, that absolutely fell apart at the seams. So this is option B. <laughs> Ah, uh, but it's number one in God's heart. He's got you there for a reason, so... And now I had already booked the flights to Paris. <laughs> I wasn't given a deposit for the hotel. <laughs> wasn't giving it back. So oh. I'm sitting comfortably in my 650 quid. <laughs> well, anyway, to answer your question, I'm doing well. And uh, I I also went to a play this weekend. It was a high school play. They were doing a spy movie called get smart. So it was quite enjoyable. Good, good, uh, play. Um, but let's get into our episode. It's sponsored of course, by our wonderful friends over at Wongo. Um, quit being boring, just eating dinner and watching TV every night. Next time, pull out a Wongo puzzle. Enjoy the conversation and fun that happens when people and puzzles go together. Wongo is the perfect balance for a good challenge without being so hard you stop talking to each other and leave your family forever. Trust me, once you try Wongo, you'll never go back to an old, boring jigsaw puzzle. These are 100% wooden puzzles. They'll last forever. Each piece is hand-drawn, so no two pieces are the same. So you'll discover some fun, whimsy pieces as you work through it. Some fun, whimsy pieces like a penguin. Like (laughs) a bear. Like... A leaf with a bell on it. Um, And they also come in this lovely wooden box, which is perfect for storing and for gifting. So with stunning designs, unique shapes, Wongo puzzles are just a cut above the rest. I personally have done the snow globe, as the box says here on the front, snow globe. Um, It is awesome puzzle. Took me about an hour or so. Had an enjoyable time putting the pieces together. It's very lovely. Uh, Brendan will have a picture in the YouTube version of it. Great little puzzle. Wonderfully done. They also have salamander and um, other types as well, a turtle and those kind of things. So go go to Wongo Puzzles. Check those out. Um, So what are you waiting for? Go to wongopuzzles.com. Pick up your puzzle today and be sure to use the promo code from Dublin to Cleveland to get 10% off your order. This is the most fun you've had with a puzzle guaranteed or your money back. Go to wongopuzzles.com and use the code from Dublin to Cleveland to get 10% off your order and get puzzling. Right now. So that has been our Wongo ad. Brendan is now beeping. I'm very, very popular. I'm sorry. <laughs> I should have turned the internet off. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> he's beeping. I don't know if he's dying, but we'll be. <laughs> it's not my fault. I'm popular. Okay. <laughs> we'll continue on. <laughs> um, so uh, we are doing, as you've seen in the title, the tell all special part 11. Our goal today is to finish off these, uh, these set of 150 questions. And with any luck, we'll be able to do it. So uh, with that, let's get into the first question. So Brandon, if it's true that we are here to help others, then what exactly are the others here for? (laughs) To be used, exploited, and wrung like dishcloths of all their worth for our own personal enrichment. (laughs) No, I joke, I joke. 
They are here to know, love, worship, and experience God in community with other believers, which is why we do this show. And so I use the holy answer, Logan, so why don't you give the sacrilegious one? Oh, of course. They're here to serve me, of course. Why else would another, <laughs> other people be here? If, a, if apparently it's true that I'm supposed to serve other people, they're here to serve me. So whenever I want to do things or whenever I want something, I need to be served. That's what they're there for. Serve Show me the grapes. <laughs> yes, Master Logan. <laughs> Logan Sun. All right. Uh, so now we'll get a little bit more um, deathy. But how many skeletons are in your closet? Oh, golly. Ooh. He's counting on his fingers, folks. Four. Four. That's a lot of dead bodies. It is. It is. But that's okay. I'm covered by the blood of the lamb that was slain. <laughs> how many are in your closet? I... I optimistically say one i don't think of anything other than one so um, is it one you're comfortable sharing or that for a future video putting under pressure that's for a future video oh (laughs) very mysterious (laughs) all right uh moving on if you could make a rule for a day and everyone has to follow it what would that one rule be Oh, my goodness. Um, No murder. No abortions. No pulling plugs on old people. No pushing your boss down the stairs, no matter how much he or she deserves it. Um, No checking someone in front of a bus just because they're there. Nada. Not allowed. Hmm. No, wait, well, hold on. That's already a rule. <laughs> we will still do it. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I don't have mind control in this scenario. You know what? Some countries allow a certain measure of murder. Yeah, no murder. I stand by what I said. <laughs> I will not be shaken. I stand true to my convictions. All right. Uh, I guess mine, since I, I, I gave the sacrilegious answer earlier. Uh, that <laughs> everyone has to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. So everyone, they don't have to accept it. They don't have to believe it. Everyone <laughs> has to hear it. <laughs> and, all right, all right. It's, it's presented 100% correctly. So it's not like, mm. you know, Olstein over here saying, oh, get rich quick. To which I say yes and amen. <laughs> <laughs> where's no point being saved and poor people <laughs> which i say where's the money <laughs> well that's a good question yeah <laughs> it's like give me the money to invest into your ministry and yes i'll read the benefits of having sown into your ministry <laughs> <laughs> all right um what would you say is the most useless talent that you have oh nowadays probably Martial arts, being black belts and karate. It's been I a long time since someone physically tried to kill me. Yeah, but it's useful. No, no one tries to kill you, though. Like, six years ago, someone came to my school with an axe to, like, start butchering the staff members. That, and I was put on security as a security guard for the day. Yeah. That was class. But, uh, no, I mean, if you've got no chance to prove yourself, no one of testing... It's not like, oh, yeah, so you know, this is my party trick. So how often do you do it? Okay. Never. <laughs> it's a bit anticlimactic, you know? I see. It's like I telling see. someone you've got a great story. Well, what is it? I'm not saying. It's like a hidden, it's like a hidden ability that you never have to use. What's that? Until somebody pushes you past that point. <laughs> <laughs> and some people are close to pushing me past that point. <laughs> You know who you are. You will not yeah. need <laughs> They know better than to listen to this. John <laughs> counting. <laughs> Steve on security. <laughs> Brenda management. 
<laughs> like, you know who you are. You know what you did. I know what you said. <laughs> you can't hide forever. <laughs> and what about yourself? What's your untapped um, or most useless of all skills? It's probably the fact that I can... I have a double-jointed finger. So if you see it right now, that is what my finger can do. Oh my goodness. Completely useless, but this is me stretching it completely straight out, and it just is like a huge S compared to the rest of my hand. So (laughs) there's no need other than to gross girls out. That's about the only enjoyment that comes from, you know, having... A double jointed finger. So. And then he's 26 years of age, and the last thing he wants to do is gross girls out. <laughs> well, especially if you don't have one, you know? <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> he suppresses this innate passion of his on a daily basis, just in the hope of finding the one. Indeed. No one knows what he's been through, he's have to, what he's had to sacrifice. It'll, it'll help me out later in life when I do have a woman so I can scare <laughs> You'll be able to move one finger like in, a, in an S shape, and she'll move two of hers in like a Y and an E shape, put them together. Yes. It'll be like, you know, God just anointing the marriage. Like, yes, you are to be together forever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question What inanimate object do you wish you could eliminate from existence? <laughs> And then an object. Oh, golly. Um, Kevin Feige's computer. The one he uses for, like, planning the MCU. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry about Endgame. It wasn't the perfect movie, but it was a very strong conclusion to a decade's worth of storytelling. You look at the absolute tripe they've turned out since, it's embarrassing. I used to think the MCU would be one of those things where I'd sit my kids down someday and say, Don't you, let's watch movies with daddy. But now it's gotten so bad, I don't think I will. At least not the whole thing and, and all of its raw glory. Interesting. Yeah. What about you? Um, there is a game that is called President that yeah. I... I hate with a passion, my cousins, because they were the ones who introduced me to it. It's this game that you use with a 52 deck of cards. And um, so, you know, your aces and kings, your face cards are high and the lower cards are low. Um, Mm -hmm. But it creates a society where the, the, the people who are called the president or the king or whatever, they get the best cards from the worst player who's called Pawn Scum. And they have to give their best cards to the best player. So it's the rich mm. get continually throughout the game. So the okay. best almost never leaves their spot. They always stay at the top. And the person in last place is always the pawn scum. And it is the most infuriating game when you're stuck at pawn scum. And you can imagine where Logan was usually stuck was as pawn scum. So Indeed. not a fan, burn that game with fire. And whoever came up with that idea, may God have mercy on your soul. (laughs) 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 Oh, jeepers. All right. Uh, What are some things that are okay to do occasionally, but definitely not okay to do every day? Clipping your fingernails and your toenails. Mm. You don't want to cut those bad boys too short. Serious, yowza. Yeah, that is true. That's a good answer. Um, I was thinking like cutting your hair because. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Doing my example, just changing the noun. Yeah, basically. Um, cause Such you're a right. cash. Well, when you don't think of a better answer, you got to go with something and <laughs> body part, you know? Um, let me see if I can think of something else. Cause I, I feel like there are some things that are, Oh, there you go. Eating out. If you eat out every day, that's not good for you. You do it once in a while. It's good. It's good to have a refresher. It's not good. If you eat McDonald's or Taco Bell every single day. I've eaten that the last three days in a row. <laughs> 
for and I more, feel like a pig <laughs> for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> on let's see, it was a dinner, a dinner, and then a brunch. Ooh. Although it was more of a brizzard, to be honest. I went from having Irish breakfast, like a full-on crepe, Nutella, and strawberries. <laughs> okay. And I have no regrets. No regrets. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, now to get even more personal here. How often do you poop? Six times a day. Six times a day? When I wake up, before I work. After work, when I get home, after dinner, before I go to bed. Wow. <laughs> I'm impressed. Thank you. <laughs> Is that not normal, no? No, I mine's two or three times okay. on, a, on a good day. <laughs> and it's usually just as I need to go. So it used wow. to be that I would do it uh, when I was at work. I would do it at break times. Um, because then I didn't have to have any social interaction whatsoever because who wants that? Especially when half the people you work with are 30 years older than you. Um, so you just go to the bathroom and stay on your phone for 15 minutes. <laughs> the wise man poops during his work hours, not during his lunch break. <laughs> I learned you go to the bathroom when you're paid to be at work. Hello. I, I learned that lesson as I went along. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's an extended break. <laughs> oh, so now that you know too much about us, because all these questions are too much that you need to know about us, but uh, <laughs> what would be the creepiest thing you could say while passing by a stranger on the street? This creepiest thing I have said, um, I just finished studying in the library at university one night, and as I was leaving, it was like pitch black, maybe 10 p.m., maybe 11 p.m., and I was thinking to myself a crazy scenario of holding a phone to my ear and speaking something very dramatic. But I actually said it. And, <laughs> and it was, it's done. He's dead. Don't worry about the body. I've taken care of it. <laughs> and there was, a, <laughs> there was a young woman, like I'm a student, about like five meters ahead of me. And I just saw her stop for like a second. <laughs> and she turned her head as if to ask, did I just hear that? And then I stopped walking thinking, did I just say that? And then she ran away. <laughs> and I never saw her again. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, yeah. So... <laughs> I don't see why you need to say anything to creep people out there. Mm -hmm. Brent hasn't seen this yet, but, and I don't know if you guys will or not. I think you might have to now that I'm about to mention this, but okay. in episode 81, so the last one we just did, uh, the first <laughs> second of the video is just me having this absolutely freaky look on my face. And I don't know why. I don't know. <laughs> it, was, it was like a partial millisecond of a look that I had, but my eyes are like completely like, bonked out and it's the first image you see when you look at the video from episode you want and it's terrifying so if you watch that episode and brendan left it in um all you need oh, to do I is will. like that and you're good <laughs> you have a key. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, I, I was trying Think back to why my brain made that face on my face when I'm starting a podcast, but that was the first image you see. Terrifying. <laughs> All right. Um, what do you like to do when you really don't feel like doing anything at all? What is your go-to? Oh, I don't often give myself time not to do anything at all. Um... You know, ice cream is definitely my go-to for procrastination. Uh, but I try not to do that as much anymore, hence drinking like three liters of milk a day instead. Um, <laughs> maybe watching YouTube videos about guys reviewing movies I have no intention of watching. Or <laughs> viewing TV shows 
that I decided I wouldn't watch from the second I realized they were being made. <laughs> but let's say, I mean, I used to love Obi Wan Kenobi in Star Wars. Heard them making a TV show about him. Kind of figured to be woke in one way or another. Kind of like how you know he takes advice from like you know a six year old who runs like a two year old, and you've got like you know Moses Riva Riva Rima whatever her name is as like you know the main character, <laughs> and then, like a show called Kenobi that kind of crack. It uh, rings of power, another epic disaster. Um, most of the MCU movies. So, because I have no intention of watching them, I like to hear the justification for why I was right not to watch them. That's kind of my guilty pleasure. <laughs> okay. Well, that's yours. Um, I think the thing I enjoy doing when I have nothing else to do, I think YouTube is, is one for sure. Um, I do enjoy playing video games. Um, Usually I end up playing with my friends, but if I don't play with my friends, I'll just play by myself. And it, it's a little sadder when you play by yourself, but <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I usually play like basketball, uh, NBA um, games on or uh, rocket league. So running around with a little car, knocking the ball in a goal. Um, so sports games, but it keeps me entertained for when I don't feel like doing anything at all. It's not productive. It's not helpful. But mm. It's, <laughs> Pass the time. Yes. Um, so, uh, are we doing this or what? <laughs> <laughs> I can only assume we are. Otherwise, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's like, this is all in your imagination. You never called me today. You've never started a podcast at all. It never <laughs> <laughs> it's like from Dublin to Cleveland has never existed. There is no Dublin. There is no Cleveland. This isn't live. No one actually ever watches these episodes. So. <laughs> That's why you never get an email back because no one ever watches. <laughs> the 800 views you had last week did not happen. How could they happen? Those 800 people don't exist. No does the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and I start gaslighting myself if we don't cut that out. <laughs> and yeah, you know, answer yourself. Are we doing this or what? Oh, Whatever totally. it is. We're totally doing this podcast. We're totally. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, this one, I Brendan has the perfect answer to this one, I'm sure. I don't. But how do you plan to commit the perfect crime? <laughs> Oh my goodness. I would. <sighs> I would let them know that I was on to them. I would put them in a situation where they would try to kill me and I'd let them think they succeeded. I would then use Mission Impossible level mask making techniques and come back as somebody else under a new identity. I'd warm my way into their family, have the daughter, date her, propose, get close, that'd be my excuse. And then on the day of our wedding, take every single one of them down. Wow. Maybe beat one of them with a shovel and throw her in a shallow grave or something. Say she'd thrown herself in, make her think she was crazy. Yeah. Somebody would watch that horror movie. <laughs> it's actually a TV show called Revenge. <laughs> it's for four seasons. <laughs> it's one of the shows I've rewatched the most. You want to know what's scary about him, him exactly just going through that right there? What's scary is he went, ha ha, this is fun. <laughs> I've been told I laugh very inappropriately, borderline evilly. <laughs> He laughed, and then he got serious. That's true. <laughs> Do that to people on the street. That'll that'll make them run. <laughs> yeah. I gave a Kamala Harris impression at a Bible study a week ago. People were absolutely disturbed. <laughs> I just let out this huge cackle, and they were like, <gasps> didn't see it coming. <laughs> oh, and here I thought you just talked about, like, 
the glasses case. You know, the glasses case is just so made about glasses cases because glasses cases are what glasses cases love and glasses cases are this. And I thought that's the impression you did. Of- <laughs> glasses are things that people with poor eyesight wear when they can see properly. <laughs> The cackle. Uh, she's the right witch, that one. <laughs> and how would you carry out your less successfully perfect crime? Oh, uh, okay. So I would sharpen a, um, a icicle down to a fine point. So almost to a point where you couldn't see it. Kind mm-hmm. of like Loki does, where he's got his little sword that stabs people. Um, okay. So I... That, and that's how I would kill them. So they'd never know that it would, what actually killed them, because it would be just this very thin line of knife that melts very quickly, but it stabs mm-hmm. them. So they die, they bleed out. Um, I'd sneak up on them, of course, it would be a, uh, I, they wouldn't know I'd be coming. And then no one would ever know it's me. There'd be no fingerprints. I'd never touch their body. It would just be the ice right through. So... <laughs> I'm sure there's some deputy out there right now going, we've got him. He is- <laughs> the Cleveland killer, the Cleveland killer. <laughs> I didn't do it. I'm just saying. That's, that's where my pathetic brain goes to. It's like, this is my alibi. I did not murder him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Next question, what is your favorite joke? <sighs> oh, I could share it, but it's a bit cheeky. We might have to give people like a timestamp. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I call it the ham sandwich story. That's all I'll say for now. If anyone wants to know, you can email us at from Dublin to Cleve at gmail.com. If you're over 18, I'll send it to you. <laughs> all right mine's pg so i have two pg ones. all right so what did the green grape say to the purple grape what did the green grape say to the purple grape yes grape to meet you <laughs> but i'm just... no he said breathe you're gonna die Because the purple grape is turning purple. And turning purple means you, you're not breathing. <laughs> My- Moving on to the next question. <laughs> I have another joke. Okay, I have another no. one. That was pathetic. I'm I sorry. Have, I have another one. I don't think I want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> you let me down so much with the grape joke. <laughs> what did... Uh, what did the fish in the tank say? Thank you. It didn't Thank say me. anything. It didn't say anything. It was dead because it was in a military tank. <laughs> Maybe the military tank was in the sea. And it didn't what, specify its location. <laughs> what did the what did the military guy say in the tank? Nothing, because he'd already drowned too. No, he wasn't drowned. He wasn't in the sea. He was on the ground. <laughs> he was in the fish tank. What no. was the punchline? What was that? What the what was the punchline? He was in a fish tank. So stop the lights. Nonsense. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, I've got one for you and. Listeners, I want you to reply underneath if it's on YouTube or if it's an email, if it's a podcast. Let us know which joke's the funniest. I know it's going to be one of mine. What do you get if you cross Sherlock Holmes with Santa Claus? Um, Detective Claus? Santa Claus. <laughs> boom, boom. What do you get if you cross Santa Claus with Sherlock Holmes? Uh, I don't know. Sherlock Holmes! <laughs> oh, brother. I guess. I know right. you love it. I know you love it. 
What is the weirdest thing that you have seen in someone else's house? Ew. <laughs> A child is respecting her mother. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, could you not do that when you've got company? <laughs> like, what is this? Could you like, just pretend to behave yourself? <laughs> um, you know Crash Bandicoot? Yes. You know that mask that goes whenever he appears on screen? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw a full length one of him, which one of my housemates years ago found in a forest. It was it was like massive. Okay. Um so yeah, we hung that up in our home for a while. That was pretty out there. <laughs> <laughs> what strange things have you seen? Okay, so I I saw this in a bathroom one time. Okay. And it was a it was a soap dispenser, okay. Right. Nice. The soap dispenser had grapes on the outside that almost what made is it with you and grapes purple grapes looked like it was jelly um but it had like purple grapes like you would see on like a jelly container and then instead of listing oh. it as cat or as as soap for washing your hands it said ketchup at the bottom so what actually was going to come out when you squirted it was ketchup going to come out was jelly going to come out or was soap going to come out Soap came out, but I was kind of confused. I thought ketchup okay. was going to come out for a minute. <laughs> that was going to have red hands. <laughs> <laughs> when I said in the toilet, just take a mouthful of ketchup. <laughs> right? Well, I don't know. Actually, one of my housemates once walked into our bathroom and, <laughs> and just went... <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it take a while? <laughs> and just, <laughs> it's not even funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> next question. <laughs> She walked into her bathroom and found a kettle on the floor. <laughs> Is the house said no hot water? Because you're really too stingy to pay for electricity and gas. Okay. So, so I was just going to boil the kettle to eat the water when I was shaving. <laughs> but I would always do the bathroom first. I forgot to put the kettle back in the kitchen. <laughs> so my housemate walked in and just found the kettle on the floor and I'd only just moved in. So she just got this image of me sitting on the toilet drinking a cup of tea from the kettle. <laughs> and she's too embarrassed to bring it up for a month. And when she finally did, I had a laugh for just as long as I laughed there. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so on to the question I've been dreading. We're down to two questions <laughs> left on this list. But which body part do you wish you could detach and why? Oh, golly. Um, if it was what on your body, that'd be different. I'd go, like, you know, back hair or something. <laughs> yeah. um, maybe one of the teeth at the back of my mouth. I'm pretty sure I, I lost one of those before, actually. Um, it got infected, turned jet black in the space of, like, a day. And it had to be removed. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I'm okay. It hasn't affected my life at all. So, yeah, I know I, I could I could cope if I lost the... It's kind of part on the other side of my mouth. Okay, yeah. Um... Well, I guess, <laughs> I'll just give a joke answer here because I really don't want any body part removed. Um, just because I can imagine this the camera notice. But uh, let's go with a rib because that means I would get a wife. So that would work. You know, God would create a wife for me. So there you go. Just take a rib from me. Bam, creates a wife. There. You can have a rib. <laughs> that was unnecessarily dark for a family show. <laughs> It's like, Lord, cut me open. <laughs> Take these bones. 
So back of this flesh. Thanks. <laughs> okay, Adam. <laughs> All right. So last I question. Could be an Adam. What was that? I could be an Adam. You have the face of an Adam. No. Well, you don't have the face of a Logan. I'll give you that much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the first three months of us being friends. I can never remember your first name. Yeah, and yet he gets on me for not remembering his <laughs> surname. Well, that's an, I didn't go on like an international show and say, "Hey, everyone, this is my friend Brennan Thomas Merriman." <laughs> Still makes me mad. I think about it. <laughs> my, this is my famous name. I'm brand building, bro. <laughs> All right, Mr. Merriman. Kimmel from Night and Behold. (laughs) Brendan (laughs) Merriman. All right, Mr. (laughs) Merriman. What's your life theme song? So, is there a question in there? Oh, yeah, yeah. What's your life theme song? (laughs) I'm sorry, okay. Oh, golly. Samuel Becker's Adagio for Strings is a very moving one. It gets pretty dramatic about the fourth and fifth minutes. Um, Requiem for a Dream, another very dramatic one. Ooh, uh, from begin to end, actually. Yeah. Um, oh... Ah, uh, ah, yes, yes. I got Requiem for a Dream. Requiem for a Dream. It's just why? a super dramatic one, and my life is dramatic. Okay. Oh, yeah, I just said, why did you like that song? I, I, I enjoy it. I think it's good. I remember seeing it on a video, like a fan made video for a TV show years ago. And it was just the perfect song choice for the show that they chose in the scene they compiled together. Mm. And then, even before I actually ever began writing books, I thought about how my story would end. What, like, the last big battle, or, for instance, would be. And I can imagine the whole thing playing to that song. So, yeah, I think, probably in my, in my final book, <laughs> if I remember, if I literally forget, remind me that I made this video, I think I will actually have a chapter with that name just in honor of it, yeah. Hmm, nice. Mm. Um, so for me, I think the first thing that, that popped in my head, because it's one that everybody's going to know, is Back in Black, because that's a good song. Um, gets a good beat going. Um, I've had graduation songs that were good, that were from like mm. Walk Prophets. Um, and there's some good, good ones in there. Uh, one of them... Off the top of my head is called, uh, or I looked up my list here of my top five favorites. Um, rebels, uh, which talks about how we're supposed to go and share the gospel and how we're all rebels and we're sharing the gospel with more rebels against God, which is good. Um, and the last one is Made for This, which I just feel fits because I feel like I'm made to be a podcaster and made to be a camp director, uh, summer director, or program director at camp. So. Made for this. <laughs> Summer director. <laughs> and he comes against Rain Bling Logan. He's over summer. He's over. He's got a personal representative on the earth for all things <laughs> non winter, autumn, or spring related. <laughs> all right. Well, folks, that has been the end of the tell all series. We will find probably some more questions down the line and probably we'll just call uh-huh. it different than tell all series. But that has concluded the most divisive, long-lasting, wild questions that we've had. So thank you yeah, so much. Longest series in the show. And putting up with it. And hopefully you enjoyed it and learned more about us as we went along. Um, I think one of our next ones should be uh, a best friend quiz a second time so we can redeem ourselves from the first one. Because now we know we've gone to 150 questions. So one of us did better than the other in that quiz <laughs> all right um so brendan would you take us with take us and finish us off with our bible time <laughs> it is proverbs 27 and 9 right yes mm-hmm. <laughs> i just had a double check <laughs> okay
correct. <laughs> okay, guys, we'll open that up. <laughs> Proverbs 27, 9. <laughs> All right, so with Logan being a Baptist and not hearing of any Bible translation other than the King James, it took us a while to find a version he was happy with. It's like, that's not what mine says. Uh, I'm going to read from the Berrien as standard Bible. Oil and incense bring joy to the heart, and the sweetness of a friend is counsel to the soul. So just like things in the natural um, you know oil incense can make us happy this is it's a comparison really about what a good friend can be to your heart uh, you know it's so often as you get older and busy or there are more demands on your time to see the people in your world the people you pray that God would put in your world hello as inconvenient, as demands on your time, as an extension of your working day, um, as, ugh, maybe not now, maybe later, but actually people are your best resource in ministry, and people are the only thing that you can really take to heaven with you. So that's why it's so important that we invest time in loving them, sharing truth with them, encouraging them, building them up. And in return, they do the same thing for us. I know for myself, <clears throat> for most of my working life years, um, I was very much so, you start the working day, talk to you at work, you end the working day, and you focus on the rest of your life. But the working day was only really there to finance what you wanted to do, your real life. And um, more recently, I've had to say, okay, these are the friends I actually see the most. I spend five days a week with these people. Um, so you know what? I have to make an effort to sow into them, to build them up, to get more personal, get more open, find out what they're going through, help them through those things. And, you know... Two days ago, um, I just said to one of them, hey, let's go to an art gallery. And then I said, and afterwards, let's go to a cafe. I had not brought my bank card with me or my wallet because my brother was doing some cryptocurrency for me at home. <laughs> so I said, my lovely, you're paying. <laughs> but I said, but I, I will give you my company <laughs> if you foot the bill. <laughs> And you know what, friends? We had a lovely time together. And then yesterday, I met up with her again and another friend. And we went out for some food and some chats. And again, it was this was a, a new friend that I hadn't spoken to too often. But it's a beautiful time together of hearing her heart, getting to know her better. And then today, I met up with the same friend three days in a row. And our other very good friend. And you know what? We had more food together. Went out to the theatre together. And sometimes we look at relationships as just ugh, financial commitments, time commitments, whatever else. But there comes a point in your life when you wake up one day and you realise, well, time's important and money's important and the finer things in life are great. If you look around and you don't have people in your corner... What has it all been for? In a world of eight, maybe pushing nine billion, it's very, very sad that there are still so many lonely people out there, especially God's kids, because we do community better than anyone does. Why, you broski, what do you get from check screen to make sure it's right? <laughs> Proverbs 27, 9. Um, so mine... <laughs> You know, mine is a, is a little different with New King James, uh, but it would be. ointment and perfume being the delights the heart. So um, if you think about when you, I guess the first thing I think of like is aloe vera and how when you have sunburn, you put it on your arm and it cools your arm. 
Um, and it gives you that like relief, that enjoyment that you had when your skin was normal, but now you've burnt it and it's not that way. So I think of that for ointment. And then of course, perfume, when people smell nice, that that's a good thing. Like you, you enjoy when people smell nice, when they smell like, uh, BO body odor, <laughs> you know, like you do in a man's ca- cabin. Yeah, no, 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 not fun. But when they smell nice. Um, and they have perfume. It's good for the heart. You go, oh, they smell lovely. They smell like roses or chocolates or whatever. Um, and then you have here that's compared to your friend, how uh, the sweetness of a man's friend gives delight by hearty counsel. So it you get delight when you have your friends who encourage you, speak with you, are with you, um, and tell you things. Um, so it was an enjoyment when uh this weekend one of my friends texted me about how he had a friend who um he was talking to and explaining the gospel to and she was adamantly against the gospel but asked him about what it meant and so he was able to share and how god does those kind of things but he brings the people into your life that you're supposed to talk to you're supposed to share with and that's what friends are friends can be encouragements um you know, we have a lot of people in our world who can tear others down, but when you have friends, they do a good job of building each other up and encouraging each other. Um, and uh, friendship is a is an important thing. We're we're made to be part of a community. We're not made to be loners or, um, you know, lone cowboys out by ourselves riding off into the sunset. We need people. God made us as community people. Even people who are more introverted, who don't enjoy human interactions. They still need people too. Um, so continue to be kind to people, continue to treat people, be the friend that you want to have. Um, and God will bring the people that you need into your life that will give you the encouragement, give you the um, course correction that we sometimes need in our lives. Um, so go go out there, be friendly, consider, consider yourself friendly, and God will bring friends into your life if you don't have them um, and will encourage you through your friends as well. So. Friends are a good thing. They, they help you out. Um, so with that, this closes uh, episode 11 of our Tell All series, which is, you know, like an eighth of what we've done episodic-wise <laughs> in our time together. Um, but thank you all for listening. We appreciate that. Uh, give us a email at From Dublin to Cleveland. Follow us at Facebook on From Dublin to Cleveland. <laughs> Um, of course, follow Brendan on YouTube, Brendan Thomas Merritt. You can find all the videos there. Uh, you can search for us on Google, just from Dublin to Cleveland podcast. <clears throat> if you search from Dublin to Cleveland, you'll get flights to go from Dublin to Cleveland. You don't want to go on unless you live in Cleveland. Um, <laughs> so it's helpful for me, not for you. Um, but look, add the podcast at the end. You'll find us on there. Uh, it'll lead you to our website. It'll lead us to lead you to Apple and Spotify and all those other places you can listen to us. Listen to us on those. Give us five stars. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, support us by, of course, buying Wongo puzzles, buying um, T-shirts. Uh, we have a couple out. Uh, so find us at all the links in the description below to find us at all those things. Like this video, share it with your friends, give it to give it to a friend, and uh, hopefully we will hear from you shortly, and you will see us all next week. So have a good week, everybody. We'll see you next time. And for the people of Ireland who are watching this and are wondering what the heck Logan said, but aloe vera, it is aloe vera. People of Ireland, aloe vera. Okay? Okay. God bless, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> no one's